Welcome back to the Australian Rotary Health Podcast called The Research Behind Lift the Lid. I'm Jessica Cooper and today on episode 46, I'll be having a chat with Josie Povey from the Menzies Institute of Health Research. Josie was awarded an Australian Rotary Health Ian Scott PhD top-up scholarship from 2019 to 2020 for her project, the Aboriginal and Islander Mental Health Initiative for Youth, Development Phase 1. Josie is an occupational therapist who has lived and worked in the Northern Territory for 10 years, both in remote mental health clinical practice and research. She is part of the Aboriginal and Islander Mental Health Initiative, or AIM High, a research program employed as a project manager. This program of research beginning in 2003 aims to bring First Nations people of Australia's worldviews into mental health treatment. Josie's PhD project aims to draft a new culturally responsive mental health app designed with and for First Nations youth to improve their access to culturally responsive mental health care. So welcome to the podcast, Josie. Thank you for joining me. How's everything Thanks. for you in the in the Northern Territory? Yeah, good. Um, things are good up here. It's a beautiful dry season day, so the humidity's dropped and um, yeah, things are good. Yeah. So, Sounds great. It's yeah, it's quite cold here and gloomy at the moment, but yeah, <laughs> sounds <laughs> nice over there. Um, yeah, so your your PhD sounds like it's it's really one piece of the puzzle of a much larger overarching initiative um, to help improve the mental health of First Nations people. I guess firstly, could you tell our audience how you first became involved in the Aim High initiative and and what it's all about? Yeah, sure. So um, I actually came to the Territory about 12 years ago um, and soon after I got a job working as a remote mental health clinician. So um, that involved travelling out to remote communities. So the communities I travelled to were Wadi, which is sort of southwest of Darwin, and um, the Tiwi Islands, which is north um, northwest. So um, in that role I was working with people with chronic mental health concerns and, and their families and um, sort of in a case management role. So that's when I first kind of started to become aware of the AIM High resources and actually did some training and was using them in clinical practice. Um, so that's when I sort of became aware of it. And um, over the years, I started a master's in um, public health, which had a sort of research component and approached um, the lead of the AIM High program, which is um, Professor Tricia Nagel. Um, about doing that project and then sort of progressed on to a PhD after a number of years as well. So that's sort of how I've come into it. The AIM High program of research, um, as you kind of said in the intro, started quite a long time ago in the, in the early 2000s. Um, and it is led by um, consultant psychiatrist and Professor Tr Trish Nagel and also our um, lead Indigenous consultant, um, Janama Mills, who's a local Larrakia man. Um, and it's all about bringing um, Indigenous worldviews into mental health treatment. So um, one of the most popular resources that um, has been developed through this program is, is what we call um, a Stay Strong Plan, which is um, like a low-intensity cognitive behavioural therapy, which um, uses kind of motivational interviewing in a care planning um, kind of way. And it's a kind of basic four-step process where the clinician's sort of supporting the client to think about the people in their life that keep them strong, to think about their strengths um, and think about their worries and then sort of set goals for change. So that, um, that's really one of the major resources that we, we um, have in that suite of resources. Um, and that has also is available um, now to clinicians, um, which is a, a paper-based version, but there's also a smartphone, um, sorry, a, a tablet version available at the moment. Um, so that, um, so we're sort of in the, in the digital mental health space as well um, and linked in with the e-mental health in practice project which is a national project as well. So, yeah, much bigger um, project of research than just my sort of PhD. 
Um, but yeah, it's good to be a part of that, that team. Yeah, yeah, well, it sounds like an important initiative and, and something really positive to be part of. So yeah, that's really great. And and your, your PhD scholarship focused um, on the development of a, a smartphone mental health app um, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Uh, what exactly yeah. was involved in this process? Yeah, quite a lot, I found out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my PhD was about um, developing a, a resource with young people. Um, so we really started with um, sort of consultations with uh, the community and with some elders and with some of the senior Indigenous researchers that work with us um, and really just to talk with them about um, how best to engage and, and which young people to kind of approach for that. Um, so we saw, we, then we started sort of engaging sites. So the sites that we used in this project um, were two schools and a um, drug rehabilitation centre, um, which was located in Darwin, but it, it um, sort of received young people from all around the territory. So some young people sort of travelled 1,500 k's to be there. Um, and also one of the schools was located in a remote community. So um, a very diverse, we were able to kind of engage with a very diverse group of young people. Um, and in that remote community, they also um, were predominantly speaking an Indigenous language. So um, we were able to get two senior Indigenous research officers from that community um, who were also able to um, act as interpreters in that role. So, um, you know, that was a really important engagement kind of feature that we were able to kind of build in. Um, and, you know, once we got our groups of young people together, it was really about talking about, um, you know, what they think mental health and wellbeing is, um, what are the things that they find that keep them strong, what are the things that take away their strength, um, you know, how, how they think that things could be improved and, and, you know, what are the kind of resources and things that they need to do that. Um, and then thinking about kind of that technology space and, you know, what are the kind of features that young people would like to see um, if we developed a, a, a tool as well. So we did a lot of consultation with young people um, in a lot of different areas um, and we got them to kind of help us design some of the features of, of what this resource might look like. So we did lots of fun activities, we shared lots of food, we had lots of laughs, which was awesome. Um, and then we also, of course, engaged with um, a lot of health professionals. So we had psychiatrists and psychologists and, uh, you know, Aboriginal mental health workers from all around Australia involved in, um, you know, just reviewing the content and making sure it's safe and um, in line with kind of best practice as well. So, um, and, and again, with any of the, the kind of national recommendations and guidelines that are available as well. So there, um, there was a lot of work involved and I guess the final phase was really about bringing it all together and um, creating something that was, you know, in line with what the youth wanted, but also um, incorporated the best kind of practice, um, you know, the therapies and skills that were available as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah well, it sounds like, yeah, it was um, very well informed by a lot of different people and, yeah, I'm sure that would really make it an effective kind of app for, for Indigenous people and, yeah, I guess um, you've probably so. learned many things during your interviews with young people um, who were involved in the development process of the app. Uh, I guess maybe could you tell us about some of the most important research findings that came out of that? Yeah, um, definitely. So we, as I, as I mentioned before, we engaged a really wide range of young people. Um, I think there was over 100 in the end. Um, there was sort of aged between, we had some as young as 10 and sort of up to 18. Um, so, you know, and we found really that a lot of them were achieving. They were, they were doing a great job. They were kicking goals. They were attending school. Many were accomplished leaders and sports people and, and you know, had a good knowledge of culture and was practising that. So, you know, that was really positive. Um, and they were connected, you know, to many things that keep them strong. Um, but in saying that, they, they also faced some significant challenges as well. So, you know, things like racism or family stress, um, you know, some were involved with the justice system, um, 
grief and bereavement um, were a bigger thing as well. So, you know, they were, they were incredibly resilient, but they also faced challenges. Um, they also talked about um, experiencing challenges to accessing help, um, particularly around mental health and well-being, um, not just because of location, um, but things like, uh, you know, stigma and shame and um, not sort of having that, uh, an understanding of when to seek help or how to seek help um, as well were, were kind of um, were, were some of the challenges. Um, but... Um, we also spoke to them about technology and, and on the most part, you know, young people thought that an app might be a really good way to reach young people. It could sort of serve in a way that it um, encourages people or helps people to get the words they need to talk about their mental health and well-being. Um, and it could potentially kind of act as a sort of first step to getting people the help that they need um, in these situations. So, um, yeah, that was really positive. Um, and in terms of the kind of features that they wanted, they, you know, they wanted fun, they wanted bright, they wanted engaging, they wanted things that were relevant to them. Um, and, you know, they also wanted storytelling. So, you know, pe young people's stories about, you know, some of the challenges they faced and, in, you know, some of the solutions that they found, um, as well as different types of activities in the app um, or the program, which was you know, around some, some that are kind of interactive activities, some that are, you know, maybe videos or different games and things like that. So, yeah, there was a good variety of yeah. suggestions. Yeah, well, it sounds like it's a, it's a really good app and it has lots of different features that, that would be culturally appropriate as well. So, yeah, that's, that's excellent. Um, so, yeah, I guess you just, um, I understand, um, yeah, there's probably, yeah, still some work left to be done on your PhD and, and you're now looking at conducting a pilot trial of the app. So if, if someone listening to this podcast wanted to try the Aim High app, where could they go to become part of this trial and, and what criteria do they need to meet um, to become involved? Yeah, so we are, um, as I mentioned, we are actually pilot testing at the moment, which is really exciting. Um, we're doing that. Um, primarily or only in Darwin at this stage. Um, so we're working with some local service providers um, to get, get the app in the hands of young people, which is a really exciting step. Um, so at the moment, yeah, young people kind of need to be engaged in those services to, to be referred to that pilot. Um, but we are, you know, that will be wrapping up um, sort of by early next year. So we are definitely looking at um, expanding that out. And, and if there's any services supporting young people out there that they think, you know, this type of tool might be, um, you know, useful in the, way that, in the way that they deliver their services or might complement what they do, then, you know, we definitely encourage them to get in touch and, yeah. and reach out. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll definitely share the link to that um, in the show notes as well so people can access it. Yeah, well, that sounds like, like it would be really helpful. Um, yeah, so um, I, I guess, you know, once you do complete your PhD um, at the end of this year, are you planning to continue working on the AIM High initiative or do you have any other projects or plans in mind? Well, yeah, working on the AIM High initiative is a plan. Um, and, yeah, we've got a really good crew up here. So we've got um, a good team of senior researchers as well as um, as you know, Jana Mills, who I, I mentioned before, as a senior um, Indigenous researcher. And we've also got um, some trainees, some young Indigenous trainees that are working in the project. So, yeah, you know, great crew to work with. And I'd certainly love to continue that work. Um, and also would love to see the app, you know, in, in more and more young people's hands and, and getting used as it needs to be. So, you know, and testing it also to make sure that it's, you know, safe and effective because that's, you know, we don't know that yet. Um, so that's what the, the next phase of testing will be will be about. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to hearing about that as well like later on when it, when it all goes out and, yeah, see if it's effective. And, yeah, that would be yeah, really great. great. Um, so, uh, yeah, as, as you would probably know, um, the money that goes into the research that we fund mainly comes from Rotarians who are out there in the community uh, raising money and making donations. And they always enjoy seeing the outcomes that have um, come out of their hard-earned fundraising. So thank you for, for sharing your research with us today. 
Um, can, can you maybe tell us about the impact Australian Rotary Health funding may have had on, on your research career so far and, and why it might be especially important to continue funding Aboriginal mental health research? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, Australian Rotary Health has certainly provided me opportunities that I wouldn't have had else otherwise. Um, you know, a particular highlight was heading down to Melbourne for some training and to kind of link up with some other um, Rotary Health scholars. So, you know, being up in Darwin, we can kind of be away from, from um, you know, the big cities and, and, you know, developing those connections with people from other universities and, and in other projects is really important and valuable, um, particularly for me being up here as well. Um, in terms of Aboriginal um, or, and Torres Strait Islander mental health, I think um, there is still quite an inequity in, in kind of outcomes in that space. And um, I think that there's a lot of work um, to be done and, you know, particularly for projects that are, you know, well-grounded in, um, you know, and, and involve Indigenous people in, in really making changes in their own community. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's really a really important space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I know our Rotarians, they do really like to see research in this particular area as well and they like to support our Indigenous health scholarships. So, yeah, what, what you're doing is so important and, yeah, I'm sure you can keep continuing on with that that same initiative and program as well and, and make some real changes. So, yeah, well, thank you again, Josie, for, for sharing everything today. And was there anything you wanted to add before we wrap up? No, um, other than a yeah, big thank you to you and um, and to Rotary Health as well. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a wild ride, the PhD in general. But um, yeah, we're wrapping it up and and yeah, look forward to the next next stages. Yeah, well, that must be very exciting. And yeah, congratulations on yeah being very close to to completing your PhD. That must be very exciting. Yeah, thank you. No worries. That was the 46th episode of our podcast called The Research Behind Lift the Lid. It's always so inspiring to hear what researchers in Australia are doing to make a difference to mental health and how they are helping us on our mission to lift the lid on mental illness. If you can, please support important mental health research like Josie's by donating on the Australian Rotary Health website. Thank you for listening. Please join us again next time. 